Hi guys! Today we are going to be talking about the Canon EOS R. The camera everybody, the whole internet, YouTube, reviews, everybody's going crazy about, everybody's upset, nobody's happy. It's just, it's, I, I don't actually think I've seen one review of one person that says it's an amazing camera. Everybody has complaints about it. And the complaints are one of three things. It's either in-body stabilization, uh, obviously the fact that the 4K is cropped, it's not full sensor readout. And the other thing is that you can't do 4K at 60 frames per second, only at 30. And everybody's like, why don't I just, just take it and put it in there? Just, just put it in there, and why not? So a lot of people are saying that maybe Canon is being deliberate because they want to force people to buy their higher-end cameras. Um, but I actually don't think that's the reason. I actually think that there is a legit reason, and I think the legit reason is their CPU. The reason they can't do it is because their CPU is not powerful enough. To crop a 30 megapixel image to an 8 megapixel image takes an insane amount of CPU power, especially if you need to do 30, 30 times a second. And to produce 4K at 60 frames per second also takes a lot of work from a CPU to do. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, but the 1DX Mark II has it. Why don't they just take the 1DX Mark II and just put it in there? No. The 1DX Mark II has two processors, which makes the camera bigger, you need a bigger battery, and it costs more. Cost is a big thing. The most, I think, the most expensive components in a camera is your CPU and your sensor. The rest is pretty, pretty cheap. So, the um, obviously with the EOS R, they wanted to make a camera that's fairly cheap, that is affordable to most people out there. Uh, especially, uh, a lot of people say that this is the entry level mirrorless full frame that Canon is releasing and that later we'll see a more like expensive full frame which hopefully will have a faster sensor so we can get 4K 60p uncropped. <laughs> um, okay so what I'm going to explain now is just sort of roughly so you have some frame of reference about why it's so difficult to do 4K uncropped or 4K 60p. So 4K is roughly 8.3 million pixels. Uh, the sensor obviously produces, uh, each pixel is actually three dots, a red, green, and a blue dot. So that comes from the sensor. So you need to take this 8 million, times it by three, then you get to roughly just shy of 25 million dots. Then, um, obviously this is going to be a bit readout, so you get bits, and there's eight bits per channel, so eight bits per dot. And that means you're getting um, 200 million bits. So that's 200 million bits for one 4K frame. And now we want to do it 60, 60 times per second. So you have to times that by 60. That lands you just, just shy of 12 billion bits a second. So that's what this processor needs to do. It needs to grab. 12 billion bits a second from the sensor and compress it to 100 million bits because you were running it let's say let's say it does 100 megabits per second that's what you want to encode to that's what you want to write your sd card so you basically want to squeeze it to a hundredth of its size so from 12 mega from 12 billion bits 12 gigabits yeah 12 gigabits to 100 megabits is roughly a hundredth of the size that you're compressing it to. So just to give you an, like, uh, an idea of how many 12 billion bits is, that is more bits than there are people on this earth. Almost twice as much. Not quite, but almost twice as much. So that is just to do 60p. That is just to encode 60p. Very important, just to encode it. Um, now let's look at 4K that's not cropped. Now your sensor is 30 megapixels. So you need to take 30 megapixels, you need to squash it to 8 megapixels. And obviously this is gonna be done at either 60p or 30p. For now, I'm just gonna do the calculations on 30p. So on 30p, you need to take 30, 30 million pixels times it by three, obviously the RGB, you get 90 million. Um, you need to times it by 8 to get to bits. That gives you 727 million. 
and you need to times it by 30 to get to uh, 30 frames per second. That lands you at almost 22 billion. That is like three times the amount of people on this earth. That's the amount of bits that you want this little process in your camera to process in one second from now to now. That's, that's a lot of work. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I, I think <laughs> that's a lot of work. So obviously now that is just to encode it or just to read the data. Now, on top of that, it needs to do, um, it obviously needs to downscale it to eight megapixels. And after eight megapixels, then it still needs to encode it. So it's, it's a two stage process. The one stage is you take all this data, yeah. encode it to, you crop it, oh, not crop it, down sample it to 4K. And then uh, the 4K, take that and encode it. But that's not all. You have processes in between. And these processes include noise reduction, color, contrast, saturation, hue, focus peaking, zebra stripes. There's a lot of other stuff also happening here that this little processor needs to do. And each time it looks at these, um, how many was it? 12 billion bits to do all these filtering and stuff so that it before it actually encodes it so it's this massive pipeline of stuff that happens and the main issue is obviously Canon CPU actually cannot do that it's not possible to do all that work it just isn't there yet and this is only for 8-bit this is not 10-bit I mean the GH5 I'm sorry that I'm shooting on now I'm shooting on 10-bit now so obviously where you all the previous calculations where you times by 8 now you have to times by 10 so that's also more um, and obviously we want to do this from a battery. You don't want it to overheat. Um, so obviously, how do we do that? How do we accomplish this massive feat? There's two ways to do it. One is to just take your CPU speed, your clock speed, and just rev it up. Just push it through the roof as fast as you can. Just let that thing melt your camera. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what it will do. It will melt your camera. So the issue is that if you just push the clock speed up, yes, you might be able to do all this work. There's billions and billions and billions of bits per second that you have to put all through all these processes. Um, but you're going to have heat issues like the Sony. And you're also going to have energy issues. You're not going to, your battery is not going to last. Also like the Sony. Um, so that gives us an idea of how Sony actually solved this problem. Now, the other way to do it is to add physical circuitry in the CPU to do the same amount of work, but with less clock cycles. So um, instead of adding, let's say you want to add, uh, you want to take a number, add it, uh, times by another number and add, an, add, an, add a third number. Instead of having three instructions, you just got one instruction that does all three things at the same time. So you need to physically build circuitry in the CPU. So the CPU can do that with one clock cycle instead of three clock cycles or two clock cycles. Yeah. Um, and just to give you an idea, if you want to encode with the H.264 codec, so if you look at hardware acceleration for the H.264 codec, that's the AVC codec, you need roughly around half a million transistors to do that on 8-bit. And that, that's a lot. Each of these transistors needs to be planned by a person, planned, drawn out, tested, emulated, approved. Then, obviously, it goes to the printer to be printed on an actual CPU. So, the printing process, obviously, that's quick. But the planning, that's where your main time constraint comes in. Somebody needs to sit and physically draw these uh, transistors out, test them, emulate them, do pathways, cater for... Um, frequencies, uh, um, bus lengths, so that the data arrives at the same time if there's different buses, uh, energy, there's a, there's a lot of things. I actually can't, I'm not going to go into that, but there's a lot of things you need to cater for. But that is purely for encoding H.264. Yeah. Now you need to do all these other things that I've mentioned, like uh, noise reduction, contrast, brightness, um, you all these other things you also need to do. So you need to build dedicated secret uh, circuitry for those things as well. So another thing to optimize these CPUs is not just taking multiple instructions and squeezing them into one instruction, but to do multiple of the same instruction at the same time, which is almost like pipelines. So instead of having one pipeline that all the instructions run through, they create multiple pipelines or cores, if you want to call it that. 
So that obviously also adds a lot of complexity. So now what you, but, but it gives you a lot of uh, flexibility. So now you can take the image, chop it up into slices, and each slice you can push through a different pipeline. So you run the same clock speed, but you're actually processing like a thousand pixels per cycle instead of one. So it's almost like CUDA cores in uh, the NVIDIA graphics cards. Very similar concept. So that's another thing you also have to develop. So there's a lot of work going into designing a CPU. It's not a simple thing. That's what I'm saying. The CPU and is actually by far the most complex and difficult part to build in a camera, especially a camera that does video. The rest is child's play. The rest is very, very easy and very straightforward. So now you ask the question, so why does Panasonic and uh, Sony, how do they do it? Well, they had time. They had all this time. They've got all this experience. They've been in the TV industries for decades now, where they've produced TVs, camcorders, uh, um, uh, VHSs, you know, the, the, what do you call these things, the tape recorders and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, DVD recorders, Blu-ray players, all sorts of stuff like that. They've done all this stuff. They've made all this stuff. Even cell phones, stuff like that. They have all this technology already. Somebody's already sat and physically drawn out all these little transistors and millions and millions of transistors and put them all together. So they have all this uh, uh, technology as well as patents that they've acquired or actually created themselves to put in these chips. And that's why they can do it in Panas and Canon can't. So my theory is that at the moment, Canon is actually working on their CPU. They're sitting and they're designing CPUs. That's why the, a lot of people are saying they're not innovating. They are innovating, they're just not ahead, first of all. And they're actually spending their energy on CPUs. I think as soon as they have a CPU, hopefully they aim for 8K, because I think if you aim for 8K, at least when it is released and it's working, and uh, by the time they've caught up, at least, and everybody's on 8K at that point, at least Canon will still be in the game. And then they can focus on new features and improving everything else about the camera and in-body stabilization and stuff like that. How long this will take, I don't know. I guess two or three years. I don't know where they are with the CPU, what they've done, but it is a lot of work. You can't just throw people at it. Uh, the more people you throw at, I think you're going to get a certain a threshold where if you add more people, it'll actually take longer. You need to keep these teams small so that the communication between them is very, very efficient. And one of the funny things that I've seen is that Canon always adds their name, the name of their CPUs and all their specs. They would say, oh, this is the D Digi 5 process. Oh, that's the Digi 6 process. Oh, this is the Digi 5 DV processor, and it's got two of them. But... Yeah, in reality, <laughs> they're actually quite far behind. They they little they're a little bit shit. Let's let's all agree. Yeah, they're a little bit shit. Um, and then you get Panasonic on the other hand, which has actually an amazing CPU. Uh, Panasonic has Panasonic CPU outperforms Canon Six Love. There's no there's no there's no contest. But I don't know the name of the CPU. It's not on their specs. I actually don't know what CPU it uses. I've searched for it, but I don't know. So yeah, I mean, uh, Panasonic CPU can do. They've got the best uh, quality video. They can they can record 10 bit HLG in body. They can do. They've got the highest frame rates and they do full sensor readout 4K. They don't overheat and they've got the best battery life. So just and that's all because of the CPU. Nothing else. Purely just the CPU. So it just shows you how much better Panasonic CPU actually is than Canon. Um, but we still don't know what the name is. <laughs> so the fact that they're going to release a full frame camera soon with a Samsung sensor, which is going to be an amazing sensor. So now you've got this amazing sensor plus an amazing CPU, which is basically the core of your camera. Yo, I think that's really going to shake the camera market a lot. That's going to cause a lot of, it's going to be a game changer. If you like this video, then please remember to press the button. If you want to see more, then subscribe. This is Steven. Till next time, ciao.